a scientist sits in his lab working on an experiment when the door suddenly opens and a tall, hard-nosed man enters. The scientist hastily stands up and salutes the general who oversees the scientist's entire program. The general dispenses with formalities and tells the scientist that he's being assigned to something new. Before the scientist can even ask what it is he'll be working on, the general gives a small wave of his hand and two soldiers appear in the doorway. They are each holding the side of a large metal box, and from the strained expression on their faces, it's clear that the box is very heavy. They set the box down on the scientist's heavy wooden desk with a loud thud before stepping away from it. The scientist looks over the bulky lead case that's been brought to him, no idea of what could be waiting inside. Be very careful with this, the general says, before handing a folder full of papers to the scientist. The scientist, unsure of how to respond, moves his hand to salute the general, but he has already turned on his heel and started to exit the small lab, followed closely behind by the two soldiers. The scientist looks over the folder that was given to him. There's nothing on the cover, so he opens it and starts looking inside, skimming over the long, dry paragraphs that say nothing at all and seem to be included in every government report for some reason. Ah, there it is. Contents. One 6.2 kilogram sphere of plutonium-239. Plutonium-239? He's been doing research in this army-run research lab for some time and knows exactly what this is. A sphere of plutonium-239 can only be one thing. A core for a new atomic bomb. Two were already dropped on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and their never-before-seen power caused death and destruction on a truly horrendous level. But they had also helped to put an end to the Second World War, potentially saving the lives of thousands or even millions more. And no matter what moral questions he had about it, this was his job. And as an expert in physics and chemistry, his research would potentially help put a stop to fighting in the future. After all, no one would dare go to war when they knew their opponent had weapons that could cause devastation on this scale, right? The scientist pours over the typewritten records, reading each and every handwritten note in the margins. As he reads through them, he sees warnings about the experiments from the report's unnamed author. There are references to how slim the safety margins are when handling the material for testing. Since the core is intended to be used in a new nuclear weapon, it needs to be right on the edge of supercriticality the point where fissile material undergoes a chain reaction that is key to nuclear detonations. The report then describes an experiment where the core was to be surrounded with bricks made of tungsten carbide that would act as a mirror of sorts, bouncing neutrons back at the core, which would knock loose other neutrons. The experiment was to be stopped before the core went supercritical, but when the scientist turns the page to view the results, he finds… nothing. There's no more pages in the folder. The scientist had heard rumors about these types of experiments. Tickling the dragon's tail, they called it. But where were the rest of the reports? Was this really the last experiment that was done? He sees at the top of the page that this last experiment was performed over a year ago. Just then, the scientist notices someone walking by in the hall. It's the general. He runs out into the hallway, waving the report at him. General! General! The general stops and turns around, clearly annoyed at being intercepted while on the way from one important meeting to another. General, what happened in the last experiment? The general somehow looks even more annoyed by the question. Don't worry about it, he barks back at the scientist. His time on the project was finished. It's yours now. And with that, the general leaves the scientist standing in the hall with his incomplete file. Days pass, and the scientist receives additional orders on what types of experiments he should be carrying out. All of them are designed to guarantee that the core of plutonium will be suitable for use in a new weapon. For the latest test, he's performing an experiment not dissimilar to the last one described in the report. But instead of using tungsten carbide bricks to reflect neutrons back at the core and achieve criticality, a beryllium dome had been created, which is to be lowered down over the sphere of plutonium. As he lowers the dome, he knows that if it were to close completely, it would cause the core to go supercritical in an instant. In order to prevent this, he uses a screwdriver to prop up one side of the dome, allowing just enough neutrons to escape so that the core can maintain its stability. As he lowers the dome just a small amount more, he starts to hear something. It's a faint noise at first, but gradually grows more and more audible. Radioactivity produces no sound, so the scientist is confused, especially since it sounds like the noise is coming from inside the dome. But surely that's impossible. There were no processes happening within that should be creating any sort of noise. The scientist bends down and lifts up the edge of the dome ever so slightly more, just enough so that he can peek inside. As he does, the sound grows louder, he looks right into the core of plutonium-239 and sees something. There is movement on the sphere. He knows this is impossible, but he can see them with his own eyes, images dancing on the surface of the plutonium sphere. 
They were faces, unnatural faces, contorted and twisted in pain. He can see now that these are the source of the sound he was hearing, because the faces are screaming. The scientist jumps back, and the screwdriver slips away from the edge of the beryllium dome, allowing it to fall and completely cover the plutonium. Out in the hallway, a security guard covers his eyes, momentarily blinded by the flash of intense blue light. When his vision returns, he runs into the laboratory it came from. The exposed sphere of plutonium sits on the desk, and the security guard looks up to see that the dome that once covered it has been embedded into the ceiling. He hears a moan come from the other side of the desk and rushes around to help the scientist, but when he looks down at the ground, he doesn't see a man. Lying there on the floor is a charred and bloody body, the small amount of skin and flesh that is left sloughing off his body. The scientist reaches toward him with a skeletal hand, emitting one final groan before collapsing. Nuclear weapons have claimed many lives, not just those who suffered directly from their overwhelming destructive energy or the subsequent residual radiation known as fallout, but many of those who researched and developed the science and technology behind them also became victims of their incredible, almost otherworldly power. Today's anomaly is an example of exactly that, combining the astonishing power of nuclear weapons with the world of the supernatural. This is SCP-095-FR, the Demon Core. SCP-095-FR is a 6.2-kilogram sphere, 89 millimeters in diameter, that is composed entirely of plutonium-239. Despite at one point seeming to be a normal sphere of the plutonium isotope, SCP-095-FR now seems to be in a permanent, self-sustaining state of criticality. This results in a near-constant emission of alpha radiation, which is powerful enough to damage any electrical circuits within a 20-meter radius. The sphere's danger grows the closer you get to it, too. Within a 10-meter radius, any living tissue will become extremely irradiated, leading to radiation sickness, while denser materials like metal or bone will themselves become extremely radioactive. The plutonium sphere is somehow able to maintain a consistent mass, despite its state, which should lead to a decrease in overall mass. It's theorized that it may be undergoing some sort of regenerative process, though it's been impossible to determine just how this might be occurring. SCP-095-FR was recovered from the seafloor near Bikini Atoll, which was the site of a series of nuclear weapon tests by the United States government known as Operation Crossroad. These and later tests, including the Castle Bravo test, resulted in the island chain becoming extremely irradiated, and many of the island's residents soon showed signs of acute radiation syndrome, leading to much of the indigenous population being forced to relocate. Following the Operation Crossroad test, an anomalously high source of radiation was detected in the sea. Though records are incomplete, it appears that the core of plutonium that had been responsible for the deaths of multiple scientists had somehow ended up on the ocean floor. Whether it got there due to being part of a failed bomb detonation, or if it somehow appeared there by other, more anomalous means, is unknown. But regardless of how it got there, the attempted recovery of the object led to the deaths of several American service members from radiation-related illnesses, which the SCP Foundation soon learned of. After assisting in the retrieval of the sphere, the plutonium was relinquished to the Foundation's custody for containment. The SCP-095-FR sphere was placed under the purview of the French branch of the SCP Foundation, owing to their having a readily available site for containment, where the sphere was stored in a lead-lined radiation-blocking safe and classified as Euclid. Only D-Class were permitted to transport and handle the plutonium, since its effects amounted to a death sentence for anyone who got too close. They were also responsible for transferring the sphere to a new safe every six months, due to the damage it was causing them from constant bombardment of radiation. All of these containment procedures would have to be changed, though, following the events of January 7, 2015. On that day, 69 years after it first took the lives of two scientists at the Los Alamos laboratory, and despite it being a scientific impossibility, the Demon Corps suddenly went supercritical all on its own. The resulting explosion was estimated to be roughly 33 kilotons, or about twice the power of the atomic bombs that had been detonated over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Nearly the entire site housing SCP-095-FR was destroyed, along with 14 other safe and Euclid-class anomalies, and in the end, the death count totaled 285, with casualties coming from either the blast itself, the collapse of structures on the site, or from the resulting radiation poisoning. Incredibly, the sphere itself survived the explosion, showing no signs that it had detonated with the force of a nuclear weapon when it was recovered from the site's wreckage. Foundation researchers studying the Demon Core determined that it was likely to explode again in roughly 50 years, 
and that the only discernible difference measured in the core before it suddenly went supercritical and destroyed the Foundation site was a sudden spike in radiation. Foundation scientists have no idea how the demon core survived, or how it detonated without warning. Some theorize that it may exist in some kind of time loop, which would potentially explain its explosion regeneration cycle, and that it is possible the core has actually detonated several times before entering into Foundation custody. But perhaps the bigger question when it comes to the demon core and why it has become such a dangerous object is why? Is there something contained within this seemingly cursed sphere of plutonium? Is it a part of those who have been impacted by the quest to harness the power of atomic energy somehow contained within? Now desperate to get out and unleash their anger on the world? Research continues, but due to the extreme danger that comes from working with the anomaly, it's likely these questions will remain unanswered for some time. Following the destruction of the Foundation site, SCP-095-FR was reclassified to Keter and moved to an underground bunker designed to withstand an explosion equivalent to a standard atomic bomb, which it is hoped will be enough to contain the blast that is almost inevitably going to happen again. It's a sobering thought, even for those of us who work with and around anomalies on a daily basis, to be reminded of the incredible destructive power of nuclear weapons. Some of the most feared and deadly anomalies contained by the SCP Foundation pale in comparison to the carnage that we've inflicted on ourselves, and it's important to remember that sometimes the true demons are found inside of us. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-767, Crime Scene Photographs, for another anomalous object with a strange and deadly secret. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.